Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with more Christmas cards for my series and using a brand new and also new to me product. This is from Simon's December release and this is the emboss and cut folder called Filigree Snowflakes. So it's basically a 3D embossing folder with the wafer dies built into it. So this is my literal first attempt using it. <laughs> I assumed since it's the same thickness as a 3D embossing folder, I would just use the same uh, sandwich layout that I use when I'm using Simon's 3D embossing folders with my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. Same thing with the Platinum, which is the platform. And then two metal shims and then the folder with my cardstock. And that works great. If you don't have two metal shims, but you have the same die cut machine as me, uh, you could use some pieces of cardstock. The Also the like cardboard piece that comes with these folders. I've seen other makers use those instead of the metal shims and that works great. I need to start experimenting with that too. Um, but yeah, so it cuts them and embosses them in one pass. Love it. <laughs> so I die cut some pink cardstock first and then I die cut Simon's uh, silver metallic cardstock just because I wanted to see how that would look. And I was just like, yes. This is also, um, I'm also the host this week for this week's color throwdown challenge. And the colors are pink, silver, gray, and white. So that's what guided my colors for these cards. So I had die cut and embossed in that one pass all my snowflakes. And then for the sentiments, I'm using the new Holiday Greetings stamp set that just came out. And like the broken record that I am, I am a sucker for sentiment sets, especially ones like this where you got just a bunch to choose from. Nice big font. Love it. Love it. And snowflakes. Again. Again. <laughs> you can never have too many snowflakes. <laughs> so anyhow, I have some slate cardstock in my Misty. I'm using my anti-static powder tool. This is the rabbit hole designs, cottontail powder tool. You guys have seen me use it in a bunch of videos recently. I'd bought it whenever it was first released, like a m couple months ago, something like that. So I've been using it quite a bit. I, I really like it, like highly recommend. It works great. So I use my anti-static powder tool and I chose one of the stamps from that set and I inked that up with some clear embossing ink, stamped it, flipped the cardstock around, stamped it a second time and then coated that with Simon's uh, Detail White embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool, and then I'm gonna trim those down in a minute off camera. And then while I have my Misty out, I'm gonna stamp more sentiments from this set, because I really liked it. It had the ampersand symbol, so I was like, ooh, I can build like, you know, a little phrase for the inside of my cards. And again, I, I don't know, I get just weird enjoyment from things like this, like the way these all just line up because of the type of font. It just, it's satisfying. <laughs> so I lined up the sentiments and the ampersand onto the inside of the card. And then I wrote, because these are brand new stamps, a lot of times you need to, well, pretty much all the time, with good quality photopolymer stamps, you need to condition them a bit. There's multiple ways you can do it. Right there, I was just rubbing it with my finger because people ask sometimes because I'll forget to mention. Another thing is you can use just a white eraser or stamp it multiple times onto scrap paper. That just works to help condition your stamps and they'll take ink better. If you find that your ink is beating up and you're not getting a very good impression, especially on solid stamps, bigger sentiments like this, try those tricks, it should work. So I'd inked up the stamps with Simon's Cheeky ink and I was tapping that ink very, very lightly because they're not joking when they call it positively saturated ink. So just very light taps. You don't need to mush it into the stamps. So the insides were done for the card fronts and apologies if you can hear like creak my chair. I need to like take it apart. It's creaky and old. Anyway, <laughs> I used the new detail pin cushion cover plate oh love and again like a broken record i love there's something about like white on white like i love doing like cover plate wafer dies those sorts of things die cutting them from white cardstock and adhering them to a white cardstock base so it's subtle but you get like the detail you know the texture etc so that's what i did for my card fronts and then i adhered the sentiments 
And then for the snowflakes, I decided the pink snowflakes would get adhered directly to the card front with some craft hacky glue. And then the silver ones, I decided to pop up with just thin 3D foam squares. So it gives them a little bit of dimension, but it doesn't make my card too bulky. So I did a little bit of um, detail cutting of some of these foam squares, just cutting them into like little strips just to make sure to cover more areas of the backs of these snowflakes, just so they don't get smushed, you know? So went along and just kind of built these little clusters of snowflakes down the side of my card fronts. And then um, once I'm happy with where I've got everything placed, I'm going to flip the card over and then just use my scissors to cut off all the little bits hanging over the edge of the card so that these can fit nicely into an A2 envelope. And then once I'm finished this one, I'll do the second card off camera because you guys don't need to see me do it twice. So, but like always, it was like, while I've got all the supplies out and all the things, why not do more than one card at a time? So I've got my cards made. I got to add some bling, you know, as is tradition. So I've got some Studio Caudia pearls. I have the Arctic Breeze and Silver Foil pearls. Those just, you know, went perfectly with everything. So I liberally sprinkled these, you know, around all of these snowflakes. And I was, as always, I was going to leave it at that. But it was bugging me even with like the massive stash of bling that I own. <laughs> I didn't have the right shade of pink. So I was like, it just, it needs, it needs more pink. So what I ended up doing was going through my stash and I actually found my distress paints. Um, like I've mentioned in recent videos, I, we moved my entire office into our attached garage, yada, yada, yada. I'm deal still dealing with chaos, but I found my paints. So yay. That's just one small win and pulled out my spun sugar distress paint, squeezed some of that onto a palette, picked it up with my fan brush, and then just added a nice splattering of that to these cards. I specifically wanted distress paint because I'm splattering right over these um, metallic foil snowflakes and most inks are not going to dry on that. So if you used an ink to do splatter over something like that, it won't dry on that metallic foil because it's practically waterproof in a sense, you know, but distress paint will dry on them. You just got to give it some time. So I was very careful handling these afterwards because usually I'll let them dry, you know, and finish my photos and everything. But as life would have it, I'm just running late. So I just was trying to be super careful <laughs> not to smear these. So splattered them, paired them with some cotton candy envelopes. So everything's matchy matchy and fun. And that finished off these cards. So I will link to everything, you know, my blog post, um, the supplies I used, I'll link to the new release. Stay tuned. I plan to have a release and review video coming very soon. Just life's been catching up with me as usual. So all that info will be in the description box below the video if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up, and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!